I once again have a Hafler DH200 in for service. This one here has a busted power switch, so we're going to take care of that. But it also has a complaint that there's a problem with the actual amplifier itself and a concern that it might be uh, causing problems with the speakers. And the, the customer basically thinks it needs caps done. Let's uh, check it out and see if it does need the caps done. This is a Hafler model DH200 that was brought in to be serviced. The client that owns this one wants it to be recapped. So in this little video I'm doing now, we're going to open this up and do an inventory and then we'll replace all the caps in this one. So open this unit up and see that this one's actually already been recapped. Somebody's gone in and they've changed all the capacitors in this thing already. It's got new main power filters. If you remember the last one of these that I had, it, the, the big caps here were gray. These ones have already been changed out. Um, the fellow that owns this one also owns the other one that I repaired for him before. That was the one that had the DC uh, voltage on the speakers. And it was uh, one of the resistors, one of the bias resistors uh, was bad. As you can see, this one here has already been modified. They've put three resistors in series on both channels on this. It was uh, So this one's already been done. His concern on this one is that when he turns it on and turns when he turns it off, the speaker voice coil does this as it's, uh, as it's discharging. So his concern was that there, there's a bit of DC voltage. Also, the switch is broken. He kind of broke the switch on it. So we're going to have to uh, get a new switch for this thing. But um, anyway, um, he brought it in and said he wanted to recap it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an inventory uh, on the caps. I doubt that these big ones are going to need to be done because they don't look to be that old. But we'll do an inventory on this thing. And uh, maybe we will change some of the, the smaller caps some of the electrolytics in here could be changed. There's not many of them on here, um, but uh, we can do that on this one. And of course, change out the power switch. And I don't even think the caps need to be changed. The, see, these amplifiers don't have a protection relay on them. These were basically kit amps when they were first offered. Uh, Hafler, of course, is Dynaco. Um, David Hafler was the, the founder of both Dynaco and the Hafler Corporation. They started out as a kit manufacturer and the, the Dynaco series were typically their vacuum tube amps and then they went to solid state and this was the, the first series of, of solid state amps. One of the ways you could typically tell if a unit was a factory made or a kit is the either the presence or lack of a serial number plate. So. Um, This one doesn't appear to have a serial number plate on it. So I would have to say that this amp was likely a kit amp. As you can see, this one's actually got a ground on the power cord too, whereas the other one that I had, the one I had to change the power cord on, did not have a grounded cord. So this one's been upgraded. Somebody's put a grounded cord on this one and they also changed out the main filters. It looks like, it looks actually, it looks like all the caps have been changed. So let's investigate, I'll have to bypass the switch so that I can power it up, but let's investigate why this thing is throwing some DC voltage across the speaker terminals as it uh, powers down. Uh, that is quite common on amps of this design, by the way, um, because what causes, it is, what causes that is as the, when the power goes off, obviously there's nothing to continue to charge the main filter caps, and I can do this because this thing hasn't been powered up in a long time, so they're, they're, they're dead. But um, uh, you have a positive supply and a negative supply. And as the capacitors discharge, the rate of discharge is going to be different from the positive supply and the negative supply. So as because just the way that the circuitry is set up, there may be a little bit more draw on one side than the other. Just, just That's just the way they are. Um, one side will start to discharge faster than the other. And as that happens, you get a slight imbalance. So if the negative voltage starts to discharge a little before the positive voltage, it'll change the bias on the amplifier and all of a sudden it'll upset the balance because it is a, a, a class B type amplifier and you'll get a little bit of a, of a positive pull on the speaker or a negative pull depending on which side starts to discharge first. This is why most, if not all, amplifiers, at least all the commercial ones, 
they have a speaker protection relay. The speaker protection relay does two things. One, it will cut off the speakers if the protection circuit detects any type of DC voltage, such as from a shorted driver or a bias resistor going bad and causing one of the transistors to go into conduction. It'll cut the speakers off to protect them. That's one of the things that the speaker protection relay does. The second thing a speaker protection relay does is if it detects too much or too low of a load, like for example, if the speaker leads were to short together, it cuts off the outputs to protect the outputs from shorting due to overloading. That's the second thing that the speaker protection relay does. It protects the amplifier. The third thing that the speaker protection relay does is it provides a delay. When you turn on the amplifier, it waits several seconds to allow the power supply to stabilize before it energizes the speakers. That way, eliminating the thump that you would normally get that's associated with amps that don't have speaker protection relays. And of course, the fourth thing it does is it de-energizes immediately as soon as the power is, re is removed, therefore eliminating the, the woofer travel as the components discharge. It's quite a common phenomenon on these, but uh, some, to some people it becomes worrisome when they see their speakers moving a bit. It's usually not going to be a problem because the power has been removed, so it's going to dissipate very quickly, but it, to, to many people it's unnerving. Let's see whether we can replicate the problem and whether we can resolve it, and then say I'm going to do an inventory and talk to the fellow that owns this, and uh, you know we'll, we'll go from there. So if we look down... And since these are basically mono blocks, they're two mono amplifiers, so we just double the component counts that uh, that are in here. But this is what's in in each side of the amplifier that I can see from here. There's two 100 volt, 100 microfarad electrolytics, one here and one over here, and down here we've got a 3.3 microfarad at 50 volts, 470 at 10. Volts. I just looked at the other side over here where I can see the numbers on it. We're going to uh, change out this defective switch. The switch was broken before it was brought in. So we'll just undo the, the wires from the switch here so that I can connect the new switch in place. So we've got to get the old switch out of the, the chassis. The new switch is here, it's just going to snap back in. Just like the original one, it's the same switch. But I have to get the old one out first. So I should be able to just pop it out. that the other wire from the resistor wasn't even soldered down properly to the fuse. Check this out. This obviously is a kit build. There, it just pulled out. The, the, uh, the, the resistor wasn't even soldered down properly. Okay, that's going to go to, this is the lamp side here. So we'll put that wire and we'll actually solder it down properly. This amp was brought in because the owner, besides breaking the switch, was concerned about the uh, capacitors in it. But as I say, we looked at it already. These have all been replaced. This amp was recapped at some point. So we'll check it all out after getting the switch in. Make sure that everything's working properly on it. These switches are nice and easy to install. They just snap in place. And I just have to reconnect the wires. First we'll reconnect this resistor to the fuse here, the neutral side on this fuse. Looks like it was never soldered down right from day one because it shouldn't have just popped off. But we'll tack this back down here.
I have the two black wires to go down to the middle terminal. One is for this secondary pilot light. What this light does is this light lights up in the event that the thermal cutout shuts off power. Then this light lights up to indicate that the power is off. Normally this light doesn't illuminate at all. The blue wire and the light, the, uh, the little lamp went to the middle terminal. And the black wire came up to the top terminal. Oh yeah, power. You want to hear something cool with these amps? If you're plugged into an isolation transformer, they will hum on power down. Observe. Power's on. Now when I turn off the power, listen. They will hum. Right? If I unplug, if I turn power back on, of course that goes away. If I unplug the power cord from my isolation transformer, I'll wait for it to hum. As soon as I unplug the cord, the hum goes away. It does not do it if it's plugged into mains. Okay, power on, power off. It does not do it. You might wonder, why is this happening? Well, because your neutral is tied to earth and this has got an earth power cord on it. My isolation transformer is not earth and because of that when the main power switch is turned off the neutral line itself can actually float on an isolation transformer you really don't have a hot and a neutral. The neutral itself is completely isolated from ground and in this case, the neutral is not grounded anywhere to the metal chassis. The white wire comes in, goes through a neutral fuse, then it goes into the main power transformer. Returns from the power transformer where it goes through these two switches here that are in series with each other, and then the main power switch to complete the circuit. So normally, the transformer, the primary, one side of it's held at ground potential when it's plugged into a regular outlet but when it's plugged into an isolation transformer the actual winding the primary itself has no reference to ground and because on an, on an isolated non-referenced isolation transformer where the secondary is not grounded which you have to do for safety because if you ground one side of your secondary on your your isolation transformer you're basically removing the isolation um, with the the entire secondary winding floating you end up with a waveform on both of the, the the power lines you don't have a hot and a neutral you have a hot and a hot with each having approximately 60 volts with respect to ground 
between 120 volt potential between the two of them but 60 volts reference with respect to ground because neither one of them is grounded anyway that's just a phenomenon that you'll get with these transformers that have an, a, a separate power transformer and that little bit of of induction that's uh, on that neutral lead when the power switch is turned off is being picked up by the amplifier and amplified as the voltage is dropping off did I explain that well enough? Anyway, let's uh, check the outputs on this and see if there's any voltage coming out the outputs as the amp shuts down because that was his concern was that he could hear something through the speakers when he turned off the power. And then of course he managed to break the switch. So let's just monitor that shutdown and see if there's any voltage whatsoever going across the speaker. on power up we got like 0.2 volt spike there which is pretty normal when an amplifier like this is starting up because there is no uh, relay there is no protection relay we'll power it down we'll see I really don't see any really don't see any any problem here we'll power it back up again here there's a bit of a pulse there when it first started up again when these amps are powering up you are you are going to get a bit of a pulse we'll do a min max on here So what the meter is doing now is it's logging the maximum voltage for both positive and negative as the power supply is discharging. If we go back, we can look at the maximum and minimum voltages here. So it looks like we had uh, 0.15 volts and a minus 0.124. Those were our min and max. Now if we want to see what the, uh, the voltage spike is when it first starts, We had a 1.1 volt positive spike. When the amp started. That's pretty common because this does not have any uh, protection relays on here. Let's check the other channel out. So we'll go move the meter to the other speaker terminal. And we'll do the same. We'll do our min max. We have 0.2 volts positive and negative 0 0.02 volts. And if I fire it up, let's just watch the kick on this one. Again, we had a, a 2 volt pulse. But really, that's nothing to worry about on a, a big amp like this because as the power supply is charging up there will be some variations just between the positive and negative supplies as they're charging up there'll be a slight imbalance and that'll cause the outputs to slightly go into conduction but we're not getting anything serious 
a, a two volt pulse is not going to damage your speakers because it's not a sustained pulse or not a sustained voltage it's just a pulse so it will make the speakers do this the, the pop out a bit but uh, we don't even hear it on these ones here as I say the uh, owner of this amp he was concerned because he could hear as it was discharging he could hear some noise but that might have been coming from his preamp too because as you know if you're feeding it with a signal and the signal is still there let's just turn on a signal here and I'm gonna to have to turn this thing down because this amp does not have volume control on it so I'm just gonna give it a signal we'll shut it off here for a minute I'll give it a signal so that we can play some music through it shut off the power while the music is still playing as the power supply discharges of course there's still going to be some sound until the voltage drops off to the point where it can no longer sustain operation that's pretty normal but uh, if there was any sound coming in from the preamp say as the preamp was powering down if it was making any noises or anything they're going to get passed through to the power amp because the power amp doesn't go off immediately Turn it on, it should come out, it should come out pretty quick. So I think this power amp's okay. I just had to replace the switch, and that was due to the owner breaking it. And uh, you say everything else looks on, okay on here. I'd say we initially got this in, and he wanted me just to recap it, but uh, looking at this thing, this has already been done. These caps have all been replaced in here. His other one that he's got, that's the one that had the, because uh, he had two amps the same. That's the other one that had a couple burned up resistors on it. See, this one's already been modded. You see the mods on this one? This one's already been modded. Those bias resistors. The other one had the original resistors that were burned up. And that's the one I had to fix. This one was, this one's already been done and modified. His other one had the, uh, burned up resistors and we had I forget how many volts we had you know tens of volts uh, DC we had high voltage on the speaker terminals and the other one and it was because the resistor had burned up and and basically I looked at this one to see what the mods were on this one and got the other one going uh, after I found the resistor was open I looked in this identical amp and found that they had modded this and put three resistors in series as opposed to a single resistor on the other amp but, uh, his other one's got the uh, the original caps in it this one's already been done, so nothing to do on this one other than replace that switch. Thanks for watching.